Hello, hello, and welcome. Today is February 6th, 2011. I am Silverfish, and this is Overgrowth Weekly number 8. And today with me is Anton and uh, Marcus. Uh, can you introduce yourselves? Hello. Hey, how's it going? I'm Anton. I'm Marcus. Yeah, so they will be joining me today. As in the previous show, uh, shows, uh, Marcus has been with me uh, and um, just talked about the points on the agenda like one usually does in one of these shows. Anyways, let's just start with this right now. I'm going to switch to the image there so you see what I see. There we go. So first uh, up on uh, this week's agenda, like always, is a look at this week's alpha. So let's do that. And what we do in this part is we take a look at each feature uh, in this list and uh, do a bit of commenting on it. And also I'll show them off in the game also. So first we have the initial guard voice test and I'm going to show you what this is all about and then uh, we can do some commenting on that. So just let me load up a character here. Loading, loading. There we go. Wrap the card, place him there. And put myself in there. And activate combat, and there we go. And what this changes is, as you can probably hear, it adds a bit of voice acting to the game. Oh, my frame rate is really bad right now. So, what do you guys think about the voice acting? Have you tried it out? Uh, <coughs> can you turn the... Oh, hang on. I'm not even... Yeah, I can't <laughs> hear the, the volume or any noise coming back from the game you're playing at the moment. So I can't actually hear it and give you a no, kind of response. No, have, you, have you tried it out yourself in the latest alpha? No, sorry. Oh, okay. I, I have. I think it's, uh, I think it's kind of a, a cool concept. Um, I, I think it still needs some work. I'm not quite sure that this is the exact voice of the game yet, but I think it's a good proof of concept. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, a lot of people, when he posted the video showing it off, said that they don't like it because, you know, it's not exactly the, you know, exact thing that the makes, you know, fits with the game. Exactly. But I don't think that's a very good argument. Or I mean, I don't think you should talk about that kind of thing at this point because it's like a first, just a first test. So, yeah, it's going yeah. to change. It's just a test. Yeah, we've definitely talked about the idea of combining animal sounds with the voices to see if we can, you know, come up with something that's a little more in the vein of what's going on. So... so. I think uh, animal voices would be good yeah, for the combat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, especially the cats. Well, cats can make some well nasty noises when they fight. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I'm sure though, as I said last time, I think in the last weekly I was pretty much against the whole voice acting idea, but then I said that if, if they do do it and... Uh, well, they did, and I'm sure it will end out. You know, it will en end up being uh, very good, like all the other things that Wolf Fire makes. <clears throat> well, I know, I know, we're also talking to some friends of mine who are professionals in the the voice acting world. Um, you know, just trying to see what it's going to take to get the best performance possible, and and what exactly that will entail. You know. So. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sure they will get it get it right. Let's just move on to the next point on the list and uh, take a look at that. Uh, so, control out, load parallax scene, and play camera animation. This is a thing that has been shown in a few videos, I think, but uh, it doesn't actually work properly for me, and I don't think it works properly for a lot of people, as is expected, as, since it's an ver since it's a very early alpha version. But I'm going to press control O and. Uh, so you can see what I, how it looks for me. Doesn't do anything. You have, you have to be in editor mode. Oh, right, thanks. I didn't know about that. What's going on? Yeah. So, control. 
I don't know if this is how it's supposed to look. It's basically a, a bunch of create thingies. And then it zooms into the sky and I'm back into the editor. So that's yeah, what I see. It, yeah, it's, it's, do you know about that, Anthony? It's supposed to be like that? David and I talked about it a little bit. Uh, it's I think it's missing some um, layer elements for for some of us. And, and he was able to reproduce it on his computer after he and I talked about it. So he's looking into it, but that's about all I know. Yeah, if, if they continue doing these tests in the following weeks, I'm sure it will be fixed for next week's alpha. But uh, I think they show it off in the last week's, uh, or maybe this week's, perhaps this week's alpha video. So check that out if you really want to see what that's all about. If I remember correctly, it's the same animation that Aubrey put at the end of the previous art asset video. So I think that it was basically just the same um, animation within the game. Yeah, exactly. So, next point on the list, new heavy footsteps for Wolf. I'm just going to quickly go back to the game and switch to the Wolf model here, so you can hear those. I don't know how loud my sound is in the game. It doesn't sound very much different on the sand also. But anyways, it's not, not, not a huge deal. It's just a bit of different sounds uh, when, you're, when you're a Wolf, because the Wolf is heavier than your, you know, rabbit or whatever. Yeah, on my computer they seemed significantly louder. Not not to the point where it didn't feel realistic, but certainly it felt like there was more weight to it and and louder. <laughs> yeah, I probably but, I might be able to show it off later when I move over to the hard parts. It's just on the sand; it doesn't sound much different. That may be. I didn't mess around with it too much. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, that's good. I suppose more sounds always nice. Next on the list, fixed problem with weapons with tangent normal maps. Okay, that's a problem with weapons with tangent normal maps. That was a maps, problem so. that I was having. Um, it's basically when you've got UVs that aren't facing the same direction. So, uh, like, you, like, say you want to extend a texture, like, down, like a pipe, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can cut that pipe along sections and then move those sections up in the UV layout so that they still fit on the texture. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it makes sense to me. I don't know if people who do not do like game development stuff uh, uh, yeah. understand what it's about. But... but yeah, basically, it's just like, yeah, it causes seams and he fixed that. Okay. Okay. It's an improvement, uh, and improvements are always welcome, of course. So let's move on to the next point. Uh, can import and play back Blender camera animations? That's what the um, parallax scene was all about. It means you can export a camera animation from Blender and then import into the game and play that camera animation um, using script, I suppose. And that will be useful for cutscenes or whatever. People who make mods don't have to use parallax scenes. You can probably make uh, like any cutscene, whatever. Awesome stuff. Um, and I am actually, I might actually use that because I have wanted to make some kind of s small video transitions for these overgrowth weeklies. But we'll have to see about that. Next point on the list is editor camera exposed to scripting. As you see right there, um, last week they exposed the um, character okay. camera. I suppose you can call it uh, the normal when you're running around as a rabbit uh, or a wolf or whatever camera. Now they have exposed the uh, normal camera when you're flying around in edit mode. The one I'll just show it to be entirely clear here. When you're in this mode where you're flying around, this is also now scripted and not hard coded into the game. So that's good, I suppose. Enables people to change how the uh, editor works. Maybe there will be some kind of sprint button in the editor. I've been wanting, wanting uh, stuff like that, for instance. So, anyways. <coughs> that probably explains why the uh, Shift W and S have stopped working to move directly up and down on the column on the Z axis. Oh, that that has worked before. 
It used to be if you held down Shift and W, you would move up, and if you held Shift and D, you would, and S, you would move down. Um, but that no longer works for me. Yeah, but to know that it's uh, the scripting is exposed, though it's uh, pr uh, probably even I could probably add something like that. <laughs> so hopefully it will be added if we just request it for the next alpha, because I want yeah. to move up and down, even though I didn't know about the feature. But I have. I have. Been yeah, I didn't even like use that before. No. I used it all the time. <laughs> yeah, it was it's, awesome. It's really useful. I I just look up and fly upwards, but I am always thinking, man, this needs a way to like fly up without having to look up, or yeah, you know what I mean. So that's good. I hope they add that back in the next alpha. Cool stuff. And the next on the list here is a sound label display to display all sound paths. Uh, I am not going to activate you to show this, but uh, it means that. Whenever a sound, you can activate a thing. I think it's via script. I think that shows all the sounds that are played. I don't know if it's on the right or left side. It's not a script. It's a setting in the configuration file in the data folder. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You can just yeah. change it from false to true, and it'll come up. Mhm. Mm so that will make all the sound paths appear as uh, sounds playing the game. So when you're running around, you see all the sound paths. When you're fighting, you hear all the sound paths to the voices and uh, so on and so forth. So that's always useful for debugging purposes. And the next on the list, jumping on alternate legs. This is actually something that was requested in, uh, I don't know, the comments somewhere or something. Oh, I think it was on the circuit pro the forums actually. <coughs> and David decided to implement it because it would be very easy to implement. I'm just showing you right here that right now the characters jump on first the left and then the right and then the left and then the right. And earlier they always jumped on, I don't know if it was the right or the left. So that's always a nice addition. Um, and the last one, loading and displaying parallax scenes with a depth sort. I uh, suppose this has something to do with the parallax scene stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't really know a whole lot about it, so I'm not going to say much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically it for... Uh, yeah, yeah, Marcus? Well, I can tell you what it is. Mm. Yes, uh, d like depth sorting. It's just like when, like... Two images that have transparency are uh, ones behind each other and ones in front of each other. It figures out which one is like supposed to be rendered first. Oh yeah, I remember I've had some problems with that in uh, the source engine. If you have um, images that are partially uh, transparent, uh, then um, it doesn't know... Like if you have two windows after each other, it doesn't know if it's supposed to render one or the other yeah. window first. So the back the window back. might render in front of the other window, so it looks really weird. You get like, well, one thing that I've noticed is that um, the QMap Alpha shader doesn't actually have it working properly, whereas the uh, plant shader does. Mm-hmm. I guess it's something uh, about performance, I guess. But I haven't actually put it up yet, so... Yeah, yeah I should do. Mm -hmm. You should. <laughs> so, that's it for the Alpha Watch, I suppose. And uh, next on the list is uh, Aubrey's Art Overview number 5. So, as usual, I'm just going to shut up, and uh, I'm actually going to mute you guys here right now, so you can say... No! <laughs> and they're, they're muted, um, and they can't hear me either, so I hope they're fine with that. Anyways, I'm going to start this art overview made by Aubrey. It's number five this week, so enjoy, guys. I'll be back in a few minutes. Welcome to the Overgrowth Art Asset Overview this week. I'd like to talk a little bit about characters. You might remember this character. He was our first one, Rabot. I've decided to have a little bit of fun and update him. We've been using Blender for our rigging data and also for our animations. We have a 